Hi, and welcome back to our lesson on air conditioning system maintenance. And in this portion of the lesson, we're going to discuss airflow checks. Now, airflow is extremely important uh, to ensure proper system capacity and to prevent iced coils. First and foremost, clean or replace air filters during your annual maintenance. Now, although most filters are replaceable, there are some electronic filters out there uh, that need to be cleaned. They have a metal pre-filter that you can just spray out, and then there's some cells in there that attract particulate matter to those cells. Those cells can be removed and wiped down just with a damp cloth, let them dry prior to putting them back in and turning them back on. Next, we wanna inspect and clean the blower wheel if necessary. So you can actually remove it take it out of the bottom of the air handler and take a look at it. You can see this one here, it's pretty cruddy. Use a brush and a vacuum to clean it thoroughly. Now, if you find any damaged or rusted blades within the blower wheel itself, well, you're gonna need to replace the blower wheel. The next thing is belt tension. Many commercial systems such as rooftop units and large air handlers are using belt drive blowers as opposed to direct drive blowers. What we're gonna wanna do here is check the belt for cracks, glazing, or other wear. Um, if you have a pulley with multiple belts, it's going to be necessary to replace all the belts at the same time. So put a match set of belts in there. Don't just replace one bad belt. The next thing that you need to do with a belt drive blower is to check the tension of the belt. Now, the tension should deflect 1 64th of an inch for each inch of span between the center line on the blower pulley and the center line on the motor pulley. So just some finger pressure pushing down, again, about 1 64th of an inch per inch of span. This will ensure proper belt tension and prevent premature failure of the belt or potentially wearing the bearings on the motor if the belt is too tight. Next, we want to inspect the motor mounts and replace those if necessary. You may get a complaint of noisy operation from the customer. We'll just check those. And here's an example of one here. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive and they can be easily replaced. And that ensures that you don't have excessive vibration and noise that can be transmitted throughout the ductwork uh, so the customer can actually hear that noise. Last but not least, measure the blower motor amperage and compare it to the rating on the data plate. Just make sure that our motor doesn't have a short or other potential damage such as seizing or a bad bearing. Now, we want to ensure that you repair any leaks around the plenum and at the duct joints. You're going to need to use a UL181 rated product. Do not use duct tape. Now, for high pressure areas like around the plenum, I recommend UL181 tape. But when you're sealing duct seams and joints, you can use mastic, which can be applied uh, pretty easily and allow it to dry, and this will seal up the ductwork. Again, leaks in the duct really reduce the system capacity and could result in positive or negative pressure within the building, causing ex excess infiltration or exfiltration. Once you've completed all of the previous steps we discussed, you're going to want to measure the delta T or air temperature drop across the evaporator coil, the air conditioner. Now, what I suggest is using a two-channel thermometer like the one shown here. Place one of the leads in the return air and one lead in the supply air and measure the difference in temperature as that air passes across the coil. Now, depending on where the unit's located and the amount of humidity in the air, the delta T is typically going to be somewhere around 18 to 22 degrees. Uh, if it's higher than that, that indicates you have a lack of airflow and you're absorbing too much heat out of that air. Now, the problem with that, that may seem like a good thing that I've got this really cold air coming out of my registers or my diffusers. However, that creates a low load on the evaporator coil that will cause a reduction in refrigerant suction pressure which could cause ice on the evaporator coil. And again, air conditioners don't have a defrost system like refrigeration. So again, make a quick check of that delta T and adjust the blower speed if necessary. This concludes the portion of our lesson on ensuring proper airflow. We're gonna take a short break now and I'll see you back here soon to continue our discussion on proper air conditioning system maintenance.